Hey, I'm Kristen Eichel. We are here at the SAN 2014 conference in beautiful San Jose, and I'm here with Dr. Mauro Zapatero, who is a phenomenal doctor and speaker. I actually had the privilege of listening to him speak today, and because I was so inspired by what you had to say and the work that you're investigating, even, not, you're kind of investigating brand new surface for a lot of people. Uh, I think so, but I think that I'm, I mean, I'm sitting on the shoulders of giants um, who have done most of this work before, and I think I'm just conveying the message in a different way, to be honest with you. I think the message is out there, and I think it just, I'm just conveying it through my experience. Okay, so tell them at home what you told me this morning. What is your message? And truly, <laughs> I've never heard anything like this before, which is why I had to jump right on into your session. Okay. Um, so, the, the, I mean, the title of my talk is The Cerebrospinal Fluid and the Appearance of I Am. So I am, right? I am awesome. I am not so awesome. I am, in this context, meaning uh, that inner sense of existence or our, our beingness, in essence. And the reason why this is, a, this is important to me and I feel like it's an important message is because, well, numerous people have, I think, tried to state this message. Um, and now I think is the ripe opportunity for people to, to hear it. Um, I did my MD, PhD at Harvard Medical School and my PhD was on the cerebrospinal fluid. And I did that because I studied uh, polarity therapy and the founder of polarity therapy, Randolph Stone, actually said that the soul swims in the CSF. And I thought that was a beautiful quote and I wanted to investigate that further for myself. I was fortunate enough to actually try to do some of the investigations of actually just seeing what the, what the cerebrospinal fluid is. What, what does it do? What does it do in our bodies? What does it do for our brains? And before I started my PhD, we sort of separated the brain and the fluid, and we didn't really have a good sense of what the fluid, what the fluid did. And the more research that we did, and other people, also other scientists also doing the research, we actually found out that the fluid was a very dynamic fluid. It contained a whole bunch of growth factors, and it provided a whole bunch of information to the brain, not only during development, but also into the adult. So new stem cells that need to know where to go are actually guided by the flow of the CSF, of, the, of an adult brain. That's f phenomenal. You know, where does that information come from? So essentially, what we found was that the CSF provided some very important cues to neural stem cells. Interestingly, during development, all the neural stem cells that make up our entire central nervous system, so our brain and our spine, actually make contact with the CSF. Your neural stem cells right now are making contact with the CSF. And so what I said, I said, this is an, you know, this is an incredible fluid. You know, maybe Dr. Stone was right. The soul swims in the CSF. And so I started looking uh, anatomically at, where, you know, where is this fluid held in the brain? And if you look at the ventricles of the brain, they're an amazing structure. The ventricles of the brain, there's, there's, there's essentially four ventricles. Uh, there's the lateral ventricles that are two, and then there's a third ventricle that's the midline structure. If you sort of go right back here, kind of where people would imagine the third eye being. Um, so when the yogis roll their eyes upwards and inwards, they're focusing on that space. Exactly. Stimulating that space. Exactly, that's what I think. And then we have the fourth ventricle that is kind of back here, like, like at the back of our occiput. And the cool thing is that the ventricles are structured in such a way that it makes they make contact. So the CSF is what fills the ventricles. The ventricles make contact with almost every single important part of our brain. And you know, just to ask the question, why does the lateral ventricle need to make contact with the frontal lobe or even send a projection so that it makes contact with the area of the brain that processes vision? You know, why 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 does the third ventricle for instance, make contact with the pituitary gland in front and the pineal gland in back. And marry them. Exactly. Uh, the masculine and the feminine balance there is what we're talking about. Exactly. As well. Exactly. So that space that you're that, that you're alluding to is filled with CSF. It's filled with this fluid. This fluid of this primordial growth hormone, exactly. if you will even. Exactly. 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 Right yeah. there. Yeah, right there. That's where the birth of right. consciousness is right there. So so it's like amniotic fluid for the brain. Oh my God. <laughs> so 
I love the fact that you said that because another. Did you write that on page 14? Of I, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the developing embryo, actually, and nobody knew, like, I bet somebody knew this, but we. But nobody that you knew knew we this. We brought this out. Okay. Okay. Even when I was talking to some. Breaking somebody, news. Listen to this. <laughs> even when I was talking to some of my professors, they're like, oh, yeah. So you said amniotic fluid. Okay. I did not say amniotic fluid, right? So there's a connection right there that you had. When we're developing, our entire system is essentially bathed in amniotic fluid, okay? Early on in development, you are completely, almost completely bathed in amniotic fluid. I think maybe at around 21 days or so, you start to, 21 days of since conception, okay? Mm -hmm. You start to form this little invagination, okay? And that's actually the primitive streak. That's one of the first visible midline structures that's seen in an embryo. That primitive streak, is, it's like an invagination like this, okay? And it goes up, it goes from essentially our tail up towards our head, okay? Mm -hmm. And it forms this invagination. At the invagination, actually, the amniotic fluid is on this side, okay? This invagination comes, it dips down, the cells go down and then actually come up almost like a fountain it's and right. come and surround it and fuse it. There it is. There it is. That fusion creates a tube. That's actually called the neural tube. Okay? Right here it's amniotic fluid. As the neural tube comes up and fuses, that neural tube is now cerebrospinal fluid. There it is. So you actually have, so the amniotic fluid early on in development is the cerebrospinal fluid, is the amniotic fluid. So the fact that you said that, so that was once connected yeah. to the Our amniotic primal fluid. mother. Exactly. Right there. Exactly. You're still carrying exactly. a bit of that exactly. sort of birth womb in your head all the time. Just philosophically even, it, that's fascinating, right. much less physiologically. Exactly. I mean, you can think of this the way that you want, you know, and that's the beauty of it is, is once I started studying it, it started becoming an embodied experience for me. Everybody has their own experience. And I think that's kind of, you know, one of the messages is I just kind of wanted to talk about the CSF to make, to start making people aware of the cerebrospinal fluid and then have people have their own experience of it. Have people recount their own experience and say, wow, that's the fluid that I was actually, that I felt bubbling from my spine or, you know, bubbling from my, my head or whatever it is. And, 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 and one of the reasons why I say that is because, you know, I talk about the third ventricle and you mentioned the pituitary gland is in front and the pineal gland is in, is, is in back. The third ventricle is in the middle. It's filled with C CSF. When you have the marriage of the, 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 the masculine and the feminine, you know, they actually, they call it the mystical marriage or, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that space is actually called the crystal palace. Um, that's where the honeymoon is. That's where the honeymoon is. Totally. Exactly. I would honeymoon in a crystal palace. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and, um, you know, that's one area, but as the CSF goes down, okay, so it goes all the way down the brain, it covers the outside of the brain, okay, so you're getting not only an inside out, but an outside in mm -hmm. a potential experience, right? It goes down the center of your spinal cord, okay, and your spinal cord, so your spinal cord still has that tube, mm -hmm. that tube is still present, mm -hmm. okay? So CSF goes all the way down, and your spinal cord ends at lumbar vertebrae 2. Okay, so if you put your hands on your hips, that's essentially lumbar vertebrae four. So just two vertebrae above that is where our spinal cord ends. Well, what's cool about this, the, the severe spinal cord is it, it's actually still present in, in the dural sac. So the dural sac actually goes all the way down to- Through the sacrum. Through the sacrum, exactly. So the CSF goes all the way down to the sacrum. Why? Why doesn't the CSF stop at the end of the spinal cord. Well, because it has to get all the way down to that root chakra. Bingo. Hello. <laughs> Flashing light goes off. <laughs> right? So when, when, when kundalini yoga people talk about an experience of some awakening that happens in their root, that then they feel a bubbling or a rising from, that is, can be directly correlated to anatomically the cerebrospinal fluid essentially getting a drop down energetic message from a source energy boom, it can go into the sacrum, it can go into the third eye or the third ventricle, and then you have 
from there, because it's fluid then, so now let's talk about fluid properties, right? So because it's fluid, that energy can be dispersed. It can be dispersed simultaneously. There's no synapses like the rest of our brain and spinal cord and nerves that have synapses that need to go, you know, that transmission information needs to be transmitted, transmitted across. There's no synapses in fluid. And you can get a total synchronization of a certain energy or a certain information because it's fluid and any place that it's bathing can be in contact with that. Is it like a wave that would move through it? Like it could a sound be a wave, wave? Yeah, exactly. So, so my like kind of big hypothesis, and I think this has a lot to do also with my studies of polarity therapy, um, are that, um, you know, and I think Adyashanti mentioned it last night, was essentially from a source energy or from, you know, absolute consciousness, there's a certain condensation or differentiation of energy that occurs. That differentiation of energy becomes, essentially becomes more and more dense as we manifest into our physical bodies. There is some people out there, including myself, who believe that sort of the first step down or the first sort of into the body process that that energy goes through is in the fluid. So it comes into the fluid and then from the fluid it gets dispersed. Into density. Into density. Yeah. So the fluid is would, would be the least dense of all the dense structures right. that we have in our body. So it comes into there and then it becomes, you know, even if you follow the chakras, for instance, ether, air, fire, water, earth, there's a more sort of condensation of that, of the chakras of this sort of system. So the fluid being that, that less dense that of our, almost. exactly, exactly. If you want to talk about conduits, then how does the energy, how does liquid, how does fluid then store energy? Well, we know a lot about sort of Bach flower remedies. You know, you, you soak flowers in water and the dilution of the flower essence, essence yeah. then you take and you actually are, are sort of are taking that essence, that energy, and it then it's transmitted through your soul system. And expanded. And expanded. Expanded. It's not, it's not just like a no. tiny dilute amount. Exactly. It literally multiplies within exactly. the system. So imagine that yep. coming from source, going into the cerebral spinal fluid, and then boom. It expands throughout your, your whole physical body. Which would make sense why people would have their big, huge awakenings, because they get this little drop down, right. and then suddenly it blooms yeah. throughout the physical being, and then they get to manifest it and feel it in their physical right. body. Right. And then the go other, crazy or not go crazy, depending right. upon the individual. But And that's when... That's when <laughs> People other like stuff. you and my wife come into hand and you know do, do Reiki part, or cranial right. sacral to kind of try to ground that energy. But um, the other analogy would be what uh, Dr. Masuro uh, Emoto did with water mm -hmm. and words. Mm -hmm. So if you know if you believe some of that, some of that research essentially, you know, if you put love on a bottle of water and then look at its crystals, it's very defined. Mm -hmm. But if you put other words like hate the crystals are not going to be as defined. So the water component actually can store, okay? Like a battery. It can store energy. Mm -hmm. It can transmit well, it. Can, well, it can re receive it, mm -hmm. right? It can store it, and it can transmit it. And so that is essentially what I think that the cerebrospinal fluid is doing is I think it's absorbing source energy. I think it's storing it. And then I think it's transmitting it totally synchronistically uh, and synchronized into our entire body. And that way we get the whole integration of information, not just in our brain, but that you're actually, the cells of your hands yep. become enlightened as well. Yep. And that's how we can do instantaneous healing. Right. And that's apparently another show. <laughs> right. So there's a lot of things that my wife and I do, for instance, for, um, for uh, you know, CSF meditations, mm. for instance, uh, that can be very powerful. Just sort of focusing on your cerebrospinal fluid, um, activating, going back into the third ventricle and, and just gently caressing the pineal gland, for instance. Uh, the pineal gland, as, as we know, is actually contains DMT. So, you know, you can do some, some interesting sort of personal experiential work with that, caressing your pineal gland and asking it to release a little bit of DMT. You know, a little bit of uh, maybe melatonin or whatever you need or, or, you know, just bathing in the CSF. And, and as you bring your awareness to the fluid, when you really know the anatomy, that's why I always show in all my slides, I always show, you know, the anatomy of the ventricles and then bathing the outside of the brain. 
And so I say, you know, if you're going to do this, you know, really kind of look at the anatomy first and then just focus your awareness on the cerebrospinal fluid, on the fluid and sense, like you talked about, sense that rhythmic pulsation within the fluid and sense that essence of the source energy in that fluid. Just do that. Just doing that can have, I think, can have some profound effects. Well, I think even just you saying that, right. you, tra- <laughs> you transmit it. It's not a joke. This is the importance, I think, of transmitting this information yeah. because once you hold that, you see it. It's now easy for me to see it. It's now easy for them to see it. We then amplify ex- that experience, and so everybody gets the benefit yeah. of that. So yeah. It doesn't just live in your beautiful head anymore. Exactly. You now expanded <laughs> it to everybody's beautiful heads. I love the fact that you called everybody's heads beautiful. They are, though. <laughs> I love it's it. It's true, right? Yes. Doctor, thank you so much. I look forward to many more of this. Can't cool. wait to meet your wife and hear yeah, about her fabulous I know. work. As she well, does amazing work. This is a dynamic. She's duo the body worker. Here. She's the body worker and healer and healer and, and the body and, and, and the mind. Right exactly. Right exactly. <laughs> really and we connect at the heart. At the soul. Perfect. I yeah. love that. Thank you so much. You thank continue. You.